Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me here on the Bare Bones Yoga Podcast, Conversations for Yoga Teachers. My name is Karen Fabian. I'm the founder of Bare Bones Yoga. I'm a yoga teacher and educator, and my goal here is to provide you, the yoga teacher, and other listeners with interesting, compelling content designed to pique your interest in teaching, help you grow as a teacher, and support you on your path to sharing this wonderful practice with your students. I've been teaching for over 14 years, and through my classes, workshops, online courses, books, and other content, I focus on the anatomy of yoga and how teachers can learn this complex subject and present it to their students in an understandable way, all designed to help them bring more impact to their teaching. Even though we're not in the same room, I want you to envision for each episode that we've sat down for tea in a cozy coffee shop. Some days we'll talk about technical teaching topics, while some days we might have a teacher friend join in on the conversation, and other days we'll face some of the personal challenges that can come up when we take on the journey of being a teacher, knowing that the more authentic we can be, the more we can impact others. For more information about my products and programs and to contact me at any time, just visit my website at barebonesyoga.com. Let's get into today's episode. Hello, welcome to Conversations for Yoga Teachers. I'm your host, Karen Fabian, and this is episode 35. First of all, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to the podcast. As always, I am eternally grateful that you are taking a little bit of time, maybe mixing it in with what you're already doing, walking to work or going to yoga class or driving in your car to integrate this information, this learning, this this podcast into all the different content that you consume all day. Sometimes there is so much we're taking in that it's really not intentional. And I really, really appreciate that you have intended to listen to this and have figured a way out to fit it into your day. So thank you so much. If you're a new listener, I want to thank you as well. Welcome to the podcast. So today I I thought I would actually talk kind of free form. I usually write out a couple of notes. Sometimes I write out more. If I'm interviewing somebody, I will write even more and we'll kind of have a little back and forth before the episode to hone in on what we want to talk about. Although today I thought it would be good. Um, I have this kind of, you know, burning desire to talk about a particular topic. And so I'm really going to kind of speak from the heart and speak kind of off the cuff. And I think sometimes that that can be a really powerful way to kind of express ourselves. And if you think about it, as yoga teachers, that's pretty much what we're doing when we step into the studio and we teach. We may certainly have a baseline sequence that we use, and of course we have our baseline knowledge, but the way it it gets expressed is really unique to us and is really um, probably pretty different from class to class, even though the fundamentals may stay the same. You walk into the studio to teach today versus tomorrow versus the next day, you're just going to be in a different frame of mind. And so how it comes across is different, but it's always really coming from the heart, coming from the mind, and kind of those two things integrating together. So today's experience for me is kind of like the same as when I step into the studio and I have this well of knowledge and this passion for teaching yoga and those two things merge and you know the, the particular class that I'm teaching uh, is born. So I wanna start out uh, today by um, letting you know about a really special event that I'm doing. And you know I know for a lot of listeners of podcasts and I experience this too, You tune out when you hear that there's something that the podcast host is going to promote. I really want you to stay with me here. Um, Of course, if you live far away from Boston, I guess I don't really expect you to find this of interest because you may decide that it's just too expensive to get out here. However, if you're listening and you live in Boston or you can get here pretty easily, I really want to grab your attention for a moment. You know, I was looking online the other day and I saw that Oprah Winfrey is kicking off 
a uh, wellness tour. And I thought, that is so cool. This is getting to the level of national conversation, this concept of wellness and all of what makes it up. And earlier this year in January, I created a two-day wellness event with all these different ways that people could experience wellness. And I'm doing it again in an even easier to fit into your schedule one day format on October 5th here in Boston. I mean, technically it's Cambridge, but Cambridge and Boston are really close. And as I said, it's Saturday, September 5th, and it's an all day event that I have personally curated. And I know that curated is kind of an overused term, but I want to use it here because it really reflects the fact that I have handpicked all the speakers, all the vendors for food, all the vendors that you'll meet that will be showing you their products. And this uh, really is an opportunity for you to shift your health and wellness to the next level. And especially for people who are struggling to kind of make sense of the information out there, for people who feel a little uninspired about their health, they kind of feel maybe a lackluster sense of having a good handle on things, or maybe people who just want to turn over a new leaf or maybe you are just really passionate about doing healthy things. And you know, as I do, that the experience of being in a room with a whole bunch of people that share the same goals as you and passions as you is a surefire way to jumpstart your health. So I'm not going to go into all the details here. What I'll generally say is that I'll be teaching a yoga class. I have an expert in meditation, teaching a meditation class and session. I have a really wonderful fitness trainer at the end of the day who will teach us a fitness session. And then all around that are healthy snacks, healthy lunch um, from some of the premier companies in Boston. And then I also have handpicked several speakers who will be sharing their wisdom, their passion, and their knowledge to help you demystify a lot of the information out there about how to stay healthy. And then at the end of the day, we've got this really, really amazing speaker, uh, and she has completed the World Marathon Challenge, which is running seven marathons in seven days on seven different continents. And if you're a runner, you definitely want to, going to want to hear her story. If you're not a runner, you're going to want to hear her story too, because she happens to be a school teacher and a mom, and she's someone who you might not think she could complete something like this. Um, you know, she's in her 50s like me. She also happens to be vegan, which is a curious, interesting aspect of her training that she's completely plant-powered. And because of all these different facets, She's a teacher, a soccer coach, a running coach. She's really someone that we can relate to. And there are so many lessons she's going to pull out for you that even if you're not a runner, you're going to find her story inspiring and you're going to learn a lot from her. So to sign up for this event, all you need to do is go to my website and it's right on the homepage. And that will give you the link. The website is barebonesyoga.com. It's right on the homepage. You can read about it. But because you're listening to this on my podcast, you're going to get a discount. So when you look at the link, don't sign up there, send me an email, let me know you want the discount, and I'll email you a special VIP page to use for sign up. So you can just hop on the website right from your phone, barebonesyoga.com, take a look at the registration page, all the fun things that are involved, but don't sign up there. Send me that email. You can email me right off my website. And I've already had a bunch of people take advantage of this discount. I want you to have it too. So that's Saturday, October 5th. Go to the website, barebonesyoga.com to check it out. Send me the email. You want the discount. Okay. So let's get on with today's episode. So what I want you to do here, and if you're in a place where you can close your eyes, this is going to really work better if you do that, because I'm going to ask you to really connect with your eyes closed to your body, to your gut, to your intuition, to your heart, to all these different aspects of yourself, your nervous system, your circulatory system, um, your muscular system, your sensory systems, and really as I, as I ask you these questions, I want you to really tap in 
to the messaging that comes up and in terms of how you feel, right? This is a how you feel exercise more than what you know, okay? So I want to ask you, how do you feel when you teach yoga? How do you feel when you stand up in front of people and you teach this practice? So there are plenty of different words that may come to your mind. You may feel confident, you may feel nervous, you may feel fearful, you may feel um, unable to come up with the words. There could be a whole host of different feelings you're having. You might feel really happy, you might feel super excited, you might feel nervous and happy. So there's lots of different things. So I want you to just kind of tap into that. And then for the next part, I want you to think about how do you feel, and this could be outside the context of teaching yoga, when you want to learn something for whatever reason, whether it's work-related or a hobby or some, some other reason, and you shift from not knowing whatever it is to knowing it, how does that make you feel? So I'll give you an example. Um, when I was learning how to play golf, I knew in my head how I could potentially feel because I had been watching golf for many, many years. And I loved watching golf. And I kind of had it in my muscle memory just from watching it, which sounds crazy because golf is a highly complex sport. Um, but I really had this sense of, doing it. It was like in my body just from all the years of watching it. So when I went out to play those first few times, I was really kind of surprised at how hard it was and that all of that watching of golf actually didn't translate to playing it. So I invested in some lessons and I got myself to the point where I can pretty much hold my own through 18 holes. I'm not the best golfer, but I definitely once I had a foundation of knowledge, could call on some of the muscle memory I had from just the intellectual exercise of watching it, and then things started to really take off. And that made me feel great. I felt really confident. I wasn't afraid anymore when my boyfriend said, hey, we're going to play golf with so-and-so and his wife. I didn't worry about hitting it off into the woods. I kind of had this um, level of confidence that allowed me to do it without feeling self-conscious and feeling that I could be in different situations with golfers of different levels of experience and still feel confident that I could hold my own. So I want you to think about something that you learned and how you felt when you shifted from point A to point B, like I just described. So I'm going to give you maybe a moment or two to just tap into that question. All right, so now I wanna bring it back to the idea of teaching yoga and this idea of how do you feel when you step into the studio and when you teach. And I want you to now think about what is the primary tool that you have as a yoga teacher to teach? And I want you to kind of think about um, the visual of one of those contractor belts. You know, if you've ever done some work around the house in terms of renovations, or you've had contractors doing work on your house, you know, they have that tool belt where there's a whole bunch of things attached. And I want you to think about what do you have as a yoga teacher at your disposal that's hanging on your tool belt, right? You're going into the studio, you've got this tool belt on, and you have many different things that you can pull off of that tool belt to teach your class. So let's go through what some of those are. Well, you could pull off your tool belt that you're gonna do yoga. You're gonna teach it from doing it. You're gonna roll out a mat, you're gonna practice with your students, and that's gonna be how you communicate what they should be doing. I remember one time I, I uh, talked to a student via email. She had emailed me with some questions and she was literally doing every single pose with her class and multiple classes a day. So it's out there, it's happening. If you're hearing it and you're thinking, oh my God, who would be doing that? It's happening. So that's one, one tool you have. The next idea uh, that you might have on your tool belt 
is assisting. So you could uh, talk through the sequence and go around and assist people. And, you know, just as another aside, I know of a teacher who very much integrates assisting into her classes. And you pretty much know when you go to her class, you are going to get assisted. And she walks throughout the room, typewriter style, and pretty much everyone gets assisted. And that is part of her teaching. That's a tool she always uses. Uh, then we have a tool of demonstration. So we're not doing all the poses, but every once in a while, we may demonstrate. In fact, we may even stop the sequence to really get people's attention as we break something down. And then the most common thing that we have on our tool belt are the cues that we use. These are the things that we say. These are the phrases we use. These are the sequences that we present and how we describe what we want people to do. So now let's go back to this visual of a tool belt and imagine this is wrapped around your waist. You step into the studio and now I'm gonna ask you, what is the most common tool that you are going to pull off that tool belt to communicate the practice? And I would say in pretty much all cases, the main tool you're going to use are the cues, right? So this idea of cues, the reason it is the most common uh, tool that we use is because of really a number of reasons. So the first thing is, it's the easiest thing to provide to a group of people. We're talking. It's a highly scalable tool. Assisting people is not. I can only be assisting one person at a time as a yoga teacher. Even if I bring two colleagues into the studio, we can only be assisting three people at once. So it's very difficult to use assisting as a way to teach a group of people and get to every person equally. Practicing with everybody, if I go to that tool, is also difficult um, from a scalability standpoint because not everybody can see you. Not everybody is a visual learner. Also, when you're practicing with your class, you can't see them. So this cuts you off on the main way that you I mean, I really want to say should be teaching, which is looking at what the heck is happening in front of you, which you cannot see if you are practicing. The next thing is demoing. Now, yeah, we can demo every once in a while, but that kind of thing, I mean, aside from the concern that you may hurt yourself because you're popping in and out of practice, there's just this idea that it's, it's not a very seamless way to present the practice because you're not doing all practice. You're just kind of peppering it in. The bottom line is the cues that you use are the most effective and scalable way to communicate the practice to a group of people. And they become even exponentially more effective the bigger your classes. And I don't necessarily mean a room of 100 people. I mean the difference between five and 10, 10 and 20, 20 and 25, right? So even if you're in a location where your classes are small, just the difference between five and 10 can be um, very significant in terms of what you can be using to effectively teach a class of 10 people. So now that I've kind of built the case for this idea that cues are, you know, I don't want to necessarily say the best tool, but one of the most, if not the most common tool that we can use as teachers to communicate the practice. This helps us understand how critically important it is for the cues we use to be effective, to be correct, to be shared confidently, um, to be easy to understand by anyone in the room not just experienced students, okay? So now 
now that we've kind of gotten to that point in this kind of case study of sorts, let's go back to this idea of how you feel when you teach. And I want you to think about, you know, the thoughts, the words, the feelings that came up when you tried to label how you feel. And I'm going to kind of give you some ideas from my own experience, but also from my observation of teachers. So I imagine a teacher who may or may not be new, but most definitely this applies to newer teachers teaching under three years. This visual of someone standing in front of the room, feeling very unsure, feeling anxious, feeling nervous, feeling like their head is just full of ideas, feeling this sense of not knowing, and at the same time, this pressure to know. I see somebody who is, um, when they're not in the studio, on the internet, scrolling through different Facebook pages, um, I see them on Amazon ordering different books on yoga. I see them listening to different podcasts, scrolling through different YouTube channels of teachers and trying sometimes kind of, I don't want to say desperately, but really trying to pull from multiple sources information that they can use to answer the questions that they have on anatomy, biomechanics, uh, alignment, action, all things that are part of effective cueing. And so when I see this teacher walk into the studio, what I see when this teacher teaches is someone who walks around the room a lot, fiddles with a lot of things in the room, doesn't look at her, uh, doesn't look at their students, um, what I hear is a lot of word finding challenges, um, different things that um, aren't really clear. Um, I hear a lot of kind of overused yoga speak, yoga terminology. Um, I might hear nervous laughter. Um, I might, I really don't hear a lot of silence. I hear, I always hear a lot of talking, a lot of filling of the room with sound. And I want you to see in that description if any of that resonated with you. Because the bottom line in terms of that description is that at the source of all of that or pieces of that is a not knowing. And the not knowing is what leads to all of those different distractions. And so the not knowing, what is the not knowing about? The not knowing is about the cues. And see, this is where it really all pulls together. The not knowing is around the cues and the what do we not know for the most part is anatomy. And even though we know as yoga teachers, there are eight limbs and we know that there are other things we can emphasize. And many of us um, may have different areas, the energetics and the chakras and um, personal development, other things that we like to share. We cannot deny that what is happening in the body in the context of a movement practice like yoga must rely on a solid foundation of knowledge on anatomy. So now that I've brought you to this point, you may be wondering, well, you know, what's, what's kind of the, the shift that you're suggesting? So the shift that I'm suggesting, and I'll use the same description that I used before, but we'll take it from the perspective of someone who's taken the time, done the work, learned the information, and now is stepping into the studio. So this is very much like that transformation I described when I gave you that golf example earlier. 
So now let's imagine a teacher who rather than doing all those other things that I talked about, you know, kind of going to all these multiple sources to try to fill in the gaps and the person, the teacher's not really sure where are the gaps and, you know, who do I really need to turn to and what's the information that I'm lacking and let me spend money and go to this course and then spend money and go to this workshop and get on a plane and go to Mexico and get on a plane and go to Thailand and do all these different things. And then at the end of it, you know, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about someone who's made an educated decision about uh, a solid program to invest in to learn what they need to learn. And now let's see what this teacher looks like. So this is a teacher who walks into the studio and confidently greets her students, his or her students. This is a teacher who uses clear cues. This is a teacher who is able to teach on the fly. This is a teacher who is able to handle distractions as they arise in the room, like the student who asks a question and flusters the teacher, like the student who has you know, some kind of personal challenge going on where they're highly distracted and being very distracting to other students in class, right? I have so many stories about stuff like that. Um, this is a teacher who's able to handle small classes, medium-sized classes, and large classes with ease. This is a teacher who's able to answer questions after class clearly and confidently, and who loves students uh, who stay after class to ask them questions. This is a teacher who's able to create sequences on the fly after class for students to take home as homework to address a particular injury or challenge a student is having. This is a teacher who loves to teach. This is a teacher who doesn't dread going to class, who doesn't sit in their car or walk really slowly to the studio because they're terrified to get up in front of their students. This is a teacher who continues to learn, who looks for ways to supplement their knowledge, who appreciates that it's not an end game, that it's an ongoing process. But by the same token, there is a certain foundation of knowledge that must, that must be there in order to effectively teach. So if any of that that I just described sounds like an amazing place that you would like to be, I want you to just kind of sit with this right now. And I want you to see how the transformation from point A to point B that I just described, the vehicle for that transformation is better cues. And the, the way to get to better cues is to fill in the knowledge gaps around anatomy, even though there are lots of other aspects to yoga. So <laughs> I'm going to end this podcast now. I can, um, I just want to reiterate that, you know, this completely came from my heart and I'm, I'm not saying that to toot my own horn. I'm saying that to give you um, a sense of how passionate I am about this idea you know, this idea about cues and this idea of working with teachers to help them transform from point A to point B and really shift how they feel about teaching. Because for many teachers, this idea of learning anatomy gets stuck at the point of the intellectual, right? Oh, I don't have time to take a course. I don't have time to learn. I don't have the money to spend and all of that. And what I'm trying to show you is it's really not about that. It's really about shifting how you feel about teaching and helping you get to a point where you are chomping at the bit to get in the room. So I'm going to end here. You know, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence in a way because I want to give you something actionable to do. So I'm just gonna throw something out there that I'm just literally thinking about off the cuff. And that is, if this conversation intrigued you and you'd like to go through a personal one-on-one -on -one free conversation with me to craft your transformation, I want you to send me an email, karen at barebonesyoga.com. I already have an existing 
free coaching session template that you can complete on my website. So really what you could do is just go to my website and right at the top of the homepage, you're going to see the link to click to set up a free consultation. And I guess for right now, we'll call it the transformation consultation. And we can map out together in a free half hour call what your transformation would look like. So if you're listening to this and you feel like, yes, 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 I want to experience that. Guess what? It's going to be different from you, from someone else, from someone else. So let's talk through in a one-on-one -on -one 30 minute call and let's craft your transformation. What does that look like? Just go to my website, barebonesyoga.com and we'll set that up. The last thing I want to remind you before we end is that at the beginning, I told you about my urban wellness uh, Saturday, Saturday, October 5th. And remember, you're going to get a discount. So again, on my website, barebonesyoga.com, there is uh, a way to email me and you're just going to email me and say, I want the discount. To find out all that's included, you can just click the link on the homepage to view the event. So I want to thank you so much for taking the time. I would love to hear your comments. So please comment so that I can find out what do you think about all of this? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next episode. Namaste.